our speaker is Tudor Popescu from Carnegie Mellon. Um, an upper bound on the size of sit on sets. So go ahead. Um, yeah, uh, the, thank you very much for having me here, Dr. Nathanson. Um, and yeah, thank you all for coming. Um, so today I'm uh, basically just going to present an article by Balog, Freddie, and Roy, um, in which they which came out a couple months ago and in which they optimized the upper bound on the size of sit-in sets. Um, again, this is this on my work, uh, but my understanding, what they did is they looked at two different proofs of um, the best known upper bound and they optimized the, the constants, I guess the, the, the error terms in both, um, in both upper bounds and um, they prove that it's either um, you're in you're in the case where you can improve the the upper bound on one in one proof, or you're in the case when you can improve the upper bound on the, the second proof. Um, so yeah, today I'm just going to go over the proofs and um, about what about uh, uh, Freddie and Roy did. And so um, we start off with again the definition of student sets. Um, Dr. O'Brien also talked about them last week. Um, so a set of natural numbers A is called a sit-in set if um, for all A, B, C, and D in A, if uh, A plus B is equal to C plus D, then A is equal to C and B is equal to D, or A is equal to D and B is equal to C. So, um, and furthermore, we denote Sn uh, to be the maximum size of a sit-in set when uh, A is in um, the, one, the one, two, and, and, and. Um, all right. So, we, we, just using the definition, we can get some um, you know, bounds pretty easily. So first of all, um, Sn is less than two square root of n, just because um, the sum set a plus a is in um, the set two, three, and two n. Um, so um, a, a, the, the size of a plus one should be two, it should be less than or equal to two n minus one. So from this, we get that Sn is uh, less than or equal to two square root of n. Um, and then, Pretty pretty easily, um, like right after that, Erdos showed that Sn um, uh, should be greater or equal than the cube the cube root of n, um, just by using a greedy algorithm. So if a is, is in one to n n and a is n n is uh, strictly greater than um, a cubed, then we can find then Erdos proved that we can find an x. Um, in n minus a, such that x can can x cannot be written as a plus b plus minus c. So basically, this just means that um, uh, a and x is going to be a sit and set as well. Um, so yeah, there's a type point in the slides. They should be a uh, and x, um, a, a union x. All right. Um, and a few years after that, there's also an around proof that sn is uh, strictly greater than square root of n infinitely many times and that sn is also um, less than or equal to uh, square root of n plus of uh, fourth of root of n. Um, okay. So um, what uh, Balog, Puerti, and Roy did is they improved um, they, they improved the, the two previous the, the um, best, upper bound, uh, best upper bounds which were given by Lindstrom and um, Cilarello. Um, so in, in 1969, Lindstrom proved that if A is a sit and set, then the size of A is less than uh, square root of n plus the um, fourth root of n plus one. And in 2010, Cilarello uh, slightly improved this bound. So he proved that the size of A is uh, strictly less than square root of n plus uh, fourth root of n plus one half. Um, and what is pretty nice is they, they came up with um, Different different proofs, so um, and again, Balog, Freddy, and Roy just improved, uh, pretty much improved on their on their proofs. Um, okay, so yeah, so this remained the the best upper bound for the maximal size of a seed on set until this March when Balog, Freddy, and Roy improved it. So the goal um, of this talk is to present the proof of, of their their theorem, uh, which is uh, that there there always exists, exists a constant gamma which is a greater or equal than 0 0.002 and the number n0 such that for every n greater or equal than n, n, n0, um, the size of the largest set and set is strictly less than square root of n plus um, the fourth root of n times one minus gamma. Yeah. 
Um, all right, so um, now we're going to prove uh, Lynch, um, to present the Lynch storms proof, um, which, which goes as following. It, it, both of the proofs are very combinatorial. Um, okay, so if um, A is a sit-in set with the elements A1, A2 for AK, um, we, we, we call the order of the difference AJ minus AI. Um, and so the order of the difference AJ minus AI is just G minus I. And if we sum all the differences of order at most L, uh, so yeah, so if we sum all the differences of order at most L, um, we know that there's um, K minus one plus K minus two plus K minus L, which is equal to L times K minus L plus one over two uh, pairs of, um, yeah, of differences of order at most L. Um, and what's interesting of, um, about the differences of, of order um, L is that all of these are distinct because A is a, is a sit and set. Um, yeah, so differences are distinct, not, not, not only of order L, but any, any two differences are distinct, right? Because if A minus B is equal to C minus D, then we, we'd have that A plus D is equal to B plus C. Um, so because all, all of these um, differences are distinct, um, which again is a combinatorial property, we get that all of the differences are, uh, yeah, so they're distinct. So um, the, the sum of the differences of order at most L must be great, so greater or equal than one plus two plus um, the biggest one, which again is L times K minus L plus one over two. Um, and this thing is um, greater than L squared over two times K minus L plus one over two squared. Um, yeah, so now we, um, we we now got a lower bound for, for the sum of um, differences of order at most L and um, you know it's um, let's try and get a, a, an upper bound. So in order to do this, um, we can just can we can look at the the sum of differences of order uh, R, um, and because because um, the terms will, will cancel out. Um, the sum of differences of order R is at most R times N, right? So just by summing up, we get we get both we get uh, an upper bound, which is the sum of elements of order uh, at most L is going to be um, strictly less than L times L plus one times N over two. So in particular, we have that L squared over two times K minus L plus one over two squared is strictly less than L times L plus one times N over two. Um, and by rearranging, we have that K minus L plus one over two is strictly less than the square root of N times L plus one over L. Um, and uh, Lindstrom used square root of one plus, the, the inequality square root of one plus X is strictly less than one plus X over two. But I guess uh, my only original um, thing is, uh, my only original idea so far, so far was we could also use AM and GM to, to get the same bond. Um, yeah, I, I came up with this last week and, and I thought I got a better bond, but it turns out it's not. Um, and I was pretty disappointed, but um, the point is we, we, in the end, we just get that K is strictly less than square root of N plus square root of N over two L plus L plus one over two. And if we set L to be the, the floor of the fourth root of N, we just obtain the desired bound, which is again, um, A is strictly less than N, uh, square root of n plus the fourth root of n plus one. So that's actually Lindstrom's proof from 50 years ago. Is that right? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, um, yeah. It's from 1969. Um, yeah, and this was again the best bound for 40 years uh, when um, Silarello came up with a slightly improved, improved bound. Um, and any questions so far? Um, if not, um, yeah, I'll, I'll continue and um, I'll talk about um, what Balog, Freddy, and Roy uh, tried to like improved uh, and saw that they could improve in this proof. So uh, Balog, Freddy, and Roy came, came up with the following remark. So if we let the error term C, which is again C of A and L, um, basically the error term in the proof. Um, so th this error term will be the difference of the between the sum of um, between the sum of elements of order 
at most L. Um, and the sum from i is equal to one to L times K minus L plus one over two uh, of I. Because again, this is, so, uh, so I guess to, to put it in words, this is just the difference between the elements, the differences of order at most L and the smallest value they can, they can get. Um, so updating the proof on the previous slide, we just have that, uh, we must have that K minus L plus one over two sh should be strictly less than the square root of one plus one over L minus two C uh, over L, L squared N times N. Um, yeah, so what Balog, uh, Freudy and Roy came up with, sh showed is that if C is, um, so, so if C is greater than um, N, N, N to the five over four, I think, um, this error term will give a will give a better bound than what we what, what we already know. So um, I'm sorry. Can yeah. You so if, if we that, what the, what was yeah, the so, condition uh, about C? Uh, C should be in um, n to the fifth over n to the five over four plus O of n, I think. Um, and I'm I'm going to talk talk about that in a bit. Um, yeah. So again, if we use the same inequalities as before, um, namely square root of one plus x being uh, strictly less than one plus x over two, um, and we set L to be one minus alpha when alpha will be chosen later uh, times n um, to the one fourth, um, we get that k is strictly less than n over n square root of n plus uh, fourth root of n minus two c minus this thing, this horrible thing. Um, plus one half, and again, um, we'll we'll see that when c is big enough, um, this will imply that we get a better bound. Okay, so yeah, for c in omega of n five over four and alpha is sufficiently small, we obtain uh, the new bound, like what Balog, Freddy, and Roy came up with. Okay, um, so this was Lindstrom, Lindstrom's proof and um, the the improvement that Balog, Freddy, and Roy came. Came up with. Um, yeah, and now um, we're going to start talking about um, Cilarello's proof. Um, which, and before we start with Cilarello's proof, we're going to uh, prove, like mention this lemma, uh, which I think it's called the sunflower lemma. So if A is a family of uh, sets of sites K, A, uh, A1 for AM, and, A, and the intersection between AI and AJ has a always has at most T elements, um, then the union of all AIs is strictly greater than K squared times M over um, TM plus K minus T. And we're not going to prove this, but um, it's just, I guess, just double counting and Cauchy Schwartz, right? Uh, I forgot who said this, but there's, a, there's only one inequality in combinatorics and that's Cauchy, Schwar Cauchy Schwartz. Um, so, um, and we can use, so Cilarello, um, use this lemma. I think it was Rusha who first uh, proved uh, like the upper bound on the size of Sidon sets and then Cilarello's, uh, imp Cilarello improved the bound of it. Um, so we're going to use this lemma to actually give to um, prove the upper bound on the size of Sidon sets. So if um, A is a Sidon set of size K and M is, in, uh, M is a natural number, we can, def we can translate a by i minus one and define ai to be the translate of a by i minus one um and since a is a sudden set we must have that the intersection between any two such ais uh, has at most one one element um and that is because if um assume that if we have two two elements in in the intersection of uh two ais then there must be a b c and d in the sudden set such that a plus i minus i is equal to x, uh, which again is equal to b plus j minus i, and c plus i minus i, c plus i minus one is equal to y, and which is equal to d plus j minus one. Um, and this would imply that a plus d is equal to b plus c. So we're going to, we get, we get in the end that actually uh, x is equal to y. Um, and yeah, so this is, I guess, the key observation in this proof. And um, yeah, and since uh, the intersection of any two um, such sets is less than or equal to one, 
um, then we can apply the lemma, right? The, you know, the Cauchy, kind of a cauchy schwartz lemma. Um, so using the lemma, we just get that n plus m, where m is the size of the Sidon set minus one, um, sorry, k is the size of the Sidon set, and m is a natural number, times m plus k minus one is uh, greater or equal than k squared times m. Um, yeah, so if, if k is greater or equal than n squared plus um, fourth root of n, uh, that, and then we can let m be the, the ceiling of n cubed over four, um, and, and three over four actually. So, and using the above, we, we're just going to get that k is strictly less than n squared plus um, n, n, to the, n to the one over four plus, uh, plus one. And we can, we can compute this more carefully to replace one with one half, but we're not going to do this. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, so what was pretty surprising to me at least was um, that Balog, Ferdi, and Roy actually um, um, realized that C, the error term in, in the previous proof was actually kind of similar to the error term in the Cauchy-Schwartz in, Cauchy in, the, in, the, in the previous lemma, in this lemma. Um, yeah, so they came up with this improvement. So if dx is the number is, so let dx be the number of uh, the, the translates of a, ai, that contain x. Um, so the lemma on the previous slide uses Cauchy's parts on dx. And if we let v to be the size of the union of the ais, uh, we, can, we can define the, the defect term or the error term in the, in the cauchy schwartz inequality, right? Um, and oh, we let k- Can I just k, interrupt for a second? Uh, so yeah. A is your sit on set and it's yeah. translated by I? Uh, by I minus one. By I minus one. But didn't you say a yeah. few minutes ago that the intersection of two AIs is at most one? Yeah. Uh-huh, okay. Uh, but you can have the same element X in more than two different of the translates. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah. And uh, as Dr. Nathanson said, you can have X in more than one set and that will definitely give you some, I guess, um, a bigger difference in Cauchy-Schwartz because Cauchy-Schwartz, um, the, the equality in Cauchy-Schwartz is obtained only when all the, I guess, all the terms are um, proportional to each other, right? So um, then this defect term is, is usually going to be greater than zero. And Balog, Ferdi, and Roy, again, show that if the, the defect term is like big enough in terms of n, then um, we can get a, uh, a better bound for the size of student set. So again, if k is, we define k to be the, the sum of dx squared minus um, dx over v squared. Um, and this is going to be the, the sum over all x's of the, the um, average average degree minus dx all squared. Um, yeah. So again, as I mentioned before, k has the same flavor as uh, as seen in the, in the previous improvement, in the, in the previous proof, I guess. Um, and if we argue uh, similarly to how Lindstrom argued, uh, to how uh, Cilarello argued, we get that um, Tm times m minus one, where T uh, T is the, the intersection, is the yeah the upper bound of the intersection of any two sets, which again is one, um, plus mk is greater or equal than k squared times m squared over v plus k. Um, and yeah, so this is a typo. It should be T is equal to one. So um, because t is equal to one and v is less than or equal to n plus m minus one, um, we get that m plus k minus one should be strictly greater than k squared times m uh, over n plus m plus k over m. Okay. Um, yeah. So if we assume that k is strictly less than two times um, square root of n cubed, we'll get n we set M to be the, the floor of um, N to the three fourths. Uh, 
we can rearrange this and use the same inequality as before to get that um, k, which is again the size of the sit and set, is strictly less than uh, square root of n plus the fourth root of n minus k over two n plus two. Um, yeah. So and if k is that big, then we're going to get something um, nice. Okay. Um, so now let us um, let us just prove the the main result of this talk. Um, and I guess I'm way ahead uh, of schedule. So uh, do you have any questions so far? It's just hard to follow what the underlying ideas might be. Uh, I mean, you can sort of see the technical arguments, but it's not clear to me what's going on. Um, but that's sure. okay, just, you know, continue. Okay. Um, all right, so, um, yeah, we, we can just, uh, so, okay. Uh, I, I guess it's going to get a lot more technical now. Right. Um, yeah, because um, so in what follows, uh, I'll, I'll just give the details of what Balog, Freud, and Roy uh, did to prove that um, we all, we're, we're all set in one of the cases where um, either k is strictly less than 2 um, n uh, square root of n cubed, or c is um, greater than n 5 over 4, I think. Yeah, 5, five over 4. Um, so yeah, so this is going to get really technical. Um, but yeah, so let, let's prove the main theorem of this talk. Um, so if A is a sit and set of size K and A1 for AK are the elements of A, um, and uh, curly A is, a is the family of translates of uh, the sit and set. So AI is going to be equal to A plus I minus one. Um, and we also let the degrees of um, the AI is to be D1 for DM plus N minus one. So this is going to be, so the DI is the, uh, is the number of um, sets in which uh, AI, in, in, in which I is it. So, um, and we can just assume that um, the Lynch term bound or the, the Cilorello bound is actually the best bound we can get. So assume that um, straight off and so that K is, strictly greater than square root of n plus a fourth root of n and strictly less than n squared plus fourth root of n plus one half. Oh, sorry. Um, Can you just say again, what is the degree of a set? What is the, what does that mean? Um, so, uh, so di is the number of sets aj in which, uh, uh, in which i is n, okay. I guess. Um, so, yeah, so it's, it's the same as in, um, where did, yeah, so where did I define it? Um, yeah, no, it's so fine. Thank you. Okay. Um, so this means that I, the average degree is going to be um, km over n plus m plus one, which is uh, the fourth root of n plus o of one. So in the following slides, um, as I promised, we will get very technical. Um, so we will we will fix a small a and a smaller uh, a small alpha and a smaller beta. Um, and epsilon and gamma such that the minimal of epsilon squared times beta and um, a horrible fraction is going to be um, strictly greater than gamma. So for example, Baluk, Freud, and Roy chose alpha to be 0 0.137, um, beta to be 0 0.037, and then epsilon to be 0 0.235, um, and gamma to be in uh, 0.02 and 0.0204 um, to yeah to get their their celebrated theorem, which is that if there there exists a constant gamma which is greater or equal than 0.002 and the number n zero such that for every n greater or equal than n zero, um, the s size of the uh, biggest uh, sit on set is strictly less than n squ square root of n plus the fourth fourth root of n times one minus gamma. Okay. Um, so, yeah, as, as I promised, this will get very technical and we'll have a lot of definitions um, in order to, I guess, shorten the, the proof. So, 
we must define s to be equal to uh, the the floor of beta times um, um, n to the three over four, and R one to be equal to um, the number of elements of A which are in one in one through S, and uh, R two to be the the number of elements of A that are greater or equal than n plus one minus S, but uh, less than or equal to n, and R to be the sum of R one plus R two. Okay. Um, now, similarly, I guess not similarly, but um, yeah, we're going to define the sets big R1 to be equal to, um, so no, sorry, not the sets, but we're going to define big R1 to be equal to the number of um, elements in A that are um, less than or equal to M minus S and big R2 to be equal to the number of elements in A set that are, um, greater or equal than n plus one minus m plus s and um, less than or equal to n and r to be equal to the sum of these two. And lastly, we're going to, um, as in the proofs uh, before, we're going to let L to be the, the floor of one minus alpha times uh, the force of the pen. Um, yeah, so we're going to, to have three different cases. So r is going to be either so small r is going to be less than or equal to two times one minus epsilon times uh, the fourth root of n, or big R is going to be equal to greater or equal than two times one plus epsilon uh, times n to the one fourth. Uh, there's, there's a typo here as well. Or uh, we're, we're going to have two times one minus epsilon n to the one fourth uh, is going to be strictly less than r, which is Strict, less than or equal to big R, which is strictly less than two times one plus epsilon times n to the one fourth. Again, uh, there should be an n here, so there's a, that, that's a typo. Okay. Um, yeah, so um, if we're going to see that in all of these cases, either um, the C we defined previously or the K we defined, defined previously, which again are the uh, slack terms or error terms, um, the, the, the error terms are going to be pretty big. So um, again, Excuse there's only, me. yeah, what's up, sorry. I'm sorry, could you, could you remind me what M is? So how, I remember that M arises in the, the degrees of the elements that uh, you count, right? So from D1 to D N minus N plus one or something like that. Uh, yeah. What was that again? Um, what is M? Um, I actually um, for, mm -hmm. forgot as well. Um, oh, so M was. Um, so for some reason you look at, at points from one up to M plus N minus one. Yeah. Um, uh, and the value of M is. Yeah. Let, me, let me go back up the slides. Uh -huh, um, uh -huh. Yeah, I think. Oh, so um, yeah, so M, I guess. Yeah, in this case, would M would be um, the intersection of A, I, and A, J, which is one. No, no, sorry, this is this is T, not M. Um, no, you had it. Oh, I had it. Uh, Oops. Yeah, yes, one, one more. So you chose M to be into oh, the yeah. three quarters. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. And so when you apply this cauchy schwarz business, you go only up to N to the three quarters. Yeah. Slide. Um, yeah, I don't remember. Could you go one next? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. All right. Um, D1. Uh -huh. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, thank uh, you. Yeah, no worries. Um, so, um, so, let's, so again, there's only one one inequality in combinatorics, um, which is cauchy schwarz So um, we also have the cauchy schwarz for variance. Um, and so if y1 through yv is a sequence of real numbers with average d, then for every x um, and one, two through, through v, um, and with, uh, with dx, dx being the average of the elements dx with x and x, then we have that the sum from i is equal to one through, um, through, through v of d minus y i squared is greater, greater or equal than uh, the size of x times um, d minus dx squared, where uh, 
dx is the average. Okay. Um, okay. So, and also note that k is equal to, um, it's pretty similar to, to this. So k is equal to what? The sum of, um, from x is equal to one through v of dx squared minus um, the sum of dx over v all squared, which is equal to the sum of x is equal to y through v of d minus dx squared. Um, so now let's, let's, move, let's move on to casing. Um, so in the first case, we have that um, we biolog for it and Roy proved that if r is less than or equal to two times one minus epsilon times the fourth root of n, then k is going to be um, so the error term is going to be greater or equal than two times epsilon squared times uh, beta times um, n to the five over four plus O of n. Um, yeah, so the proof pretty much uses the uh, variance uh, format of the Cauchy-Schwarz. Um, and yeah, I guess that's and some, some inequalities. So if, again, dx, let dx be the average of the degrees in x, uh, of a set x in um, n plus m minus one, in the first n plus m minus one natural numbers. So, um, oops, um, did I, I think there's another type. So if we let another set be um, an intersection, the uh, union of the first s natural numbers and the natural numbers in uh, less than or equal to, a greater or equal than n plus m minus s, and less than or equal to n plus m minus one, and use the cauchy schwarz inequality for variance, we have that, uh, sorry, so the, the second one should be k. So we have that k is, um, oh, so k is greater or equal than x times d minus dx squared. Okay. And on the other hand, we have that dx is equal to one over the size of x uh, times the sum of the degrees, which um, we can, which for this particular x, we can write as um, one over two s, two s um, times the sum um, over j less than or equal to s of the, um, the size of the sorry the, the the number of elements in the certain set that are less than or equal to uh, than j plus the size the number of elements in a that are less than or equal to n plus one minus j but um, gr greater or equal than n plus one minus j but uh, less than or equal to n. So um, therefore, this is less than or equal to half uh, to one over, yeah, to one half times um, the number of elements in the sitting set, which are um, in the first S natural numbers and uh, or gr greater or equal than n plus one minus sets, but uh, less than or equal to n. Um, and this is going to be equal to r over two. Um, and why is it equal to r over two? I forgot why it's equal to r over two. Um, but in any case, this is less than or equal to one minus epsilon um, times a quarter uh, and to a quarter. Um, and using the fact that d is um, n to the one fourth plus o of one, we can combine the, the above um, we can also use, we combine the above with um, knowing that the side of the size of X is equal to 2S and S is beta to the uh, N to the three, three quarters plus of one. Um, we just get that K is greater or equal than two to the epsilon squared times beta times N to the five fourth plus O of N. Um, so that's, um, yeah, so again, um, I think I, I should have I should have shown you again what um, R and uh, S stand for. So again, R is exactly the number of elements uh, in these in these sets, and S is equal to beta to the n to the five uh, three fourths. Um, so yeah, using um, yeah, so um, this this equality right here is just uh, untangling definitions. Um, yeah, and again, D is just um, set that way. Um, so yeah, so I guess th this is the first case. Um, any any questions? Uh, 
Um, great. If not, um, we can just move on to the second case. Um, and yeah, so from now on, the, the proof will just be very technical. Um, so yeah, so if big R is greater or equal than two times one plus epsilon um, times n, uh, times uh, a fourth, uh, yes, times n to the one fourth, then um, we also get that uh, the error term k is going to be greater or equal than two times epsilon squared plus beta times n to the five fourths, five fourths plus um, O of n. Um, and again, it, this, this is similar to the previous case. So if x is um, m, m minus s plus one in m and intersect, intersected with uh, the elements between n and n plus s plus one, um, we get that for every x. Um, so every x less than or equal to uh, m but greater or equal than m minus s plus one is covered by the translates of a intersected with the first m minus s natural numbers, at least uh, the number of elements um, in the sit set that are less than or equal to m minus s. But again, this is equal to r1. And similarly, um, for every x in the second, um, in, in the second interval, uh, so every x in the second interval gets covered at least r2 times. So uh, using this, we have that um, the average, the yeah, the absolute value of the average degree minus d is going to be greater or equal than r over two minus d, which is um, greater or equal than epsilon to the n over one fourth, by um, because we're in the case where r is greater or equal than two times one plus epsilon times n to the one fourth. Um, and again, using the fact that x is equal to the number of elements in x is equal to two x two s where again, and S is equal to B that times uh, N to the three fourths uh, over two. So we have that X is equal to B that times N to the three fourths plus O of one. Um, and yeah, using the, the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality for variance, we are, got, we are done. Um, okay. So now also note that um, um, in, in in the slides with the Balog uh, for the Enroy improvement, we show that uh, the size the, uh, of the biggest sit and set is less than or equal to square root of n plus fourth root of n minus k over 2n plus 2. So if k is greater or equal than 2 times epsilon squared plus times beta times uh, n to the 5 fourths plus O of n, um, we get the new bound, which is the uh, Balog for the Roy Bob. Um, yeah, so in both case one and two, we are done. Um, okay. Now, in, in case three is a bit more involved, so we have to make um, a couple of remarks before we proceed. Um, so if um, the natural numbers between S plus one and M minus S contain, um, so yeah, they contain uh, big R1 minus R1 members of the sit and set while um, the natural numbers between n plus one minus m plus s and n minus s contain um, r, r2 minus, uh, big R2 minus R2, small r2 uh, elements in the sit and set. Um, and in particular, together they, they contain big R minus r members of the sit and set. Um, okay, so that's one, one remark. And the other is that since we already proved that the two, two cases, we may just assume that um, two times one minus epsilon times n, n to the one fourth is strictly less than r, which is less than or equal to r, which is uh, less than two times one plus epsilon times uh, the fourth root of n. Um, so now combining these two remarks, we get that um, r minus r, big R minus small r must be uh, oh, sorry, it must be less than or equal to four epsilon um, times n to the one fourth. Um, yeah, this is a typo. This should be less. Um, but yes, and also we know that the number of elements in the sedon set that are um, less than or equal to, sorry, that are greater than or equal to s plus one, but less than or equal to m minus s and or um, 
greater than or equal to n plus one minus n plus s, but uh, less than or equal to n minus s is um, strictly less than four times epsilon times n to the one fourth. So what Balog Fourier and Roy did is they they modified Lynch Stern's proof by using um, this remark and instead of using L to be um, I think n to the one fourth, the, the floor of the ceiling of n to the one fourth, they just used um, L to be equal to the, the floor of one minus alpha times n to the one fourth. Um, so, yeah, so um, for L def defined like this, um, they found some many differences, aj minus ai of small order, but uh, significantly larger than k times L, which, um, which implies that. Um, C, which again is C is the error term be, be, between what the, the size of the differences can be and what it actually is. Um, so this, this means that the, the error term will be significant, right? It will be pretty large. Um, yeah, so again, we're in, let's formalize this. Let's formalize what we mean by pretty large. Um, so if if two times one minus epsilon times n to the one fourth is less than r, um, which is less than or equal to big R, which is less than two times one plus epsilon times uh, the fourth to the n, then the error term C uh, will be greater or equal than one minus alpha minus two epsilon squared times alpha minus two beta uh, times uh, n to the five over four plus O of n. Um, yeah, so again, this uh, okay so let's consider the pairs um ai aj such that ai is less than or equal to s and is which is strictly less than m minus s and strictly less than aj and um j to be um less than or equal to i plus l so basically we're just considering the pairs that occur in the um in the differences of order at most l so each such difference appears in the definition of C, right? Again, it's, the, it's, it's just the difference of uh, elements of order at most L. So we must have that um, AJ minus AI is greater or equal than M minus two S, which is strictly greater than L times K minus L plus one over two, since alpha is greater than two beta. But uh, again, um, so um, note that L times K minus L plus one over two would is the biggest um, such element that could appear in the that that we said that appears in the um, in the error term. So that means we're going to get a, a large big a, a large error term. So in particular, uh, each such pair adds m minus two s minus this thing uh, l times k minus l plus one over two, um, which is greater or equal than alpha minus two two beta times um, n to the three fourths plus O of n over two to, uh, to O of n squared, O of squared of n to C. Uh, and again, um, this is, yeah, so, and given AI, we, we can just choose I to be between one and R1 and J to be between big R1 and L plus I. Um, and know that we can choose um, L minus big R1 plus I such J's. So the number of, uh, of pairs AI, AJ that satisfied this is at least one plus two plus L minus R1 plus R1, uh, which is going to be strictly greater than L minus R1 plus R1 squared over two. So analogously, the, the number of pairs uh, that of order L that satisfy a i to be less than n plus one minus m plus s, which is strictly less than n plus one minus s, which is less than or equal to a j, uh, and again they're they're of order at most l, um, is at least l minus r two plus r two squared over two, and using this we just apply Cauchy Schwarz once again or power mean and um, arithmetic mean to get that, um, and using that big R minus R is less than or equal to four times epsilon times n to the one fourth. We get that the number of pairs must be uh, strictly greater than at least one minus alpha minus two epsilon um, n square root of n plus of one. So um, in particular, we get the desired bound. We get that 
uh, C must be strictly greater than one minus alpha minus two epsilon squared times alpha minus two beta times n to the five over five, five over four plus O of n. Um, yeah, so when using the fact that K is strictly less than square root of n plus the fourth root of n minus two minus horrible fraction involving C, um, we get that if C is big enough, we will get the new bond, which is the Balog for the ROI theorem. So, um, yeah, and I guess we're, we're done with the talk. Um, thank you. Thank you. Wait a minute. Let me just get back here live if I can. Oops. So, uh, any questions for our speaker? Yeah, so, um, uh, yeah, this is very technical, and yeah, I'm sorry I could not give like all the insights that I guess Bottle or Freddie and Roy could could have given. Um, but, but so uh, yeah. just to get like the first technical point out of the way, having gone through the paper um, and the proof of the theorem, it's correct, right? That is yeah. uh, everything that they yeah. stated. You could you know you could understand, justify, and whatever. Um, yeah. Um, I, I think it's uh, every, everything is totally totally justified um yeah um and yeah, i guess the proof is very nice but um yeah as i said before it's just um kind of pointing out that both the two previous proofs are um off in a similar sense and yeah so if, if one of them is off then the, if one of them is not off then the other one must be off so we get a better bond which which is pretty surprising, but very nice. Um, yeah. So the previous state of the art was that the largest sit-on set in the interval from one to n had at most n to the one half plus n to the fourth elements. And what these guys did is prove that the largest sit-on set would have at most n to the one half plus, you know, 0 0.98 times n to the one fourth. Yeah. So uh, uh. on the one hand, that seems like a modest improvement, but on the other hand, it took 50 years to get that. So it's um, it's not at all uh, insignificant. Is, but... is, that best, is that best possible? Has anyone looked at numerical examples? Oh, it's certainly not bad. Well, there's the, the conjectures are, so I think one conjecture is, <clears throat> that for any epsilon greater than zero, not one fourth, but any epsilon greater than zero, the largest sit on set should have less than n to the one half plus n to the epsilon for n sufficiently large. And there might even be uh, a statement or a question of Erdős that maybe the largest sit on set should be less than square root of n plus a constant. Um, does anyone know about these things? I mean, I this is what I have in my yeah. head on uh, trying to remember. Um, but I don't Numerical know. evidence can't disprove that. No, of course not. I'm just asking so if it's is is n, to, n to the one half plus a constant, and the constant is now at least three. Is it? I'm just asking for the support. In other words, how far out have they gone, right. and how big has the constant gotten? I, yeah, so I don't know. The, the constant was very small. It was, um, yeah, so it was between 0 0.002 and 0 0.0204. Um, and you cannot get it, get better than 0 0.00204. Um, oh, they also said in the constant you're talking about is like the constant alpha when it's one minus alpha times n to the one fourth. Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. So it's, Jeff, when it's the square root of n plus c, how far out have they gone and that c is three? I don't know. Perhaps Unsolved Problems in Number Theory, Volume 3 by Richard Guy has a section on Sedan sets that gives, the, that gives results in the numerical. Thanks. Yeah. Mm. I say, Tudor, uh, can you uh, close your screen share? Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. Oh, there you are. Wow. So, uh, let's see, yeah, um, yeah, it's kind of curious. Um, 
Kevin, do you know what numerical results there are on the maximal finite sit-on sets? Uh, there is a massive uh, like uh, parallel computation effort to compute these for uh, small sets. And I think the, uh, the shortest, the smallest diameter set with 27 elements is known. Uh, and probably we know 28 elements. And uh, somewhere and I saw a web page, they had out to like 50 or 60 elements where they had a guess as to what the optimal might be. What is the dia What do you mean by smallest diameter? Uh, max minus min. But you can translate it. So, so, the, so if you want to have 27 elements in your Sedone set, you want to make the max minus the min as small as possible. Right, so it's. Right. But what about the calculation on the largest sit on set up to n? It contained in the, the interval from 1 to n. That's just the, the inverse problem. Right? It's, it's just a little more computationally friendly to, to fix the number of elements and look for how small can you make n instead of taking n and looking for how big you can make the number of elements. So, but the question was, if you want to find um, a C such that the largest sit on set is at most root n plus C, what number C have been calculated? That's for what, for some range, like, can, do you know that, um, for n up to 100, the largest sit on set is at most square root of n plus 10,000. Well, it can't be 10,000. Um, plus three, plus five. Well, this, uh, this result, uh, the end of the one half plus end of the one fourth plus one half is the best upper bound short of the exhaustive computation. Uh, and oh, no, exhaustive computation, computation is. Uh, Yeah, right. So, so uh, twenty-seven elements. Um, they're cataloged on Wikipedia and somewhere else. If you have twenty-seven elements, then twenty-seven to the fourth is going to be quite small. I, I think it'll be less than um, it'll be less than two. So twenty-seven to the fourth plus that. Matters. Yeah. So. So, uh, so for five hundred and fifty-four. Uh, we can get a 27 element Sidon set. Whereas 554 to the one half is like 23.53, right? So, so already then by 554, you've got an excess of, uh, uh, well, you know, 27 minus 23.5. So, which is three, almost three and a half, which is just what Jeffrey was saying a few minutes ago, right? Yeah, but three and a half out of uh, over 23 and a, three and a half out of 500 is quite big. Three and a half over 23 and a half is even bigger. Doesn't impress me that the error is three if you're dealing with 500. Oh, but root n is not the lower bound. But the, the lower bound is root n minus n to some power, like five sixteenths, maybe. Oh. So if you just look at the, you know, take an n to be 554 and look at what the theory gives, uh, it's somewhere, uh, well, there's a gap of probably six or seven. Yeah. Uh, no, it's just curious. These problems have been around for a long time and it seems uh, strange that, uh, see, I mean, I guess what puzzles me is that somehow um, these guys at Urbana, uh, Balag, Firidi, Roy, they just didn't, uh, you know, wake up one morning, do some huge calculation and get this result. They had uh, some idea about what they were doing. And um, yeah. Now, all three of them are speaking at Kant. They're not speaking about the same thing. Maybe one of the three is going to speak about this. So um, maybe I should arrange their time to maximize uh, the number of people who um,
can harass them about uh, or ask them to explain where this all came from. Because uh, uh, I don't like technical stuff. Mel, Mel one, uh, go ahead, Jeffrey. What I got from this proof is you take AI, the translates of A by plus I minus one, and you're forming a graph with the AIs, because there's either zero or one edge connecting each AI to HA, and we were looking at the degrees of the elements in that graph and, and taking a look at how balanced the degrees are in the graph and squeezing out a little extra information about imbalance of the degrees, which is where where the information that this improvement is coming from yeah. on the Lindstrom argument. Oh, I see, that's an idea. And then the technical calculations of the means versus the various, the degrees of the edges that say a counterexample graph can't be that unbalanced to you save something. So then that, that gave them a wedge to apply Cauchy-Schwartz in a more refined way, squeezing information out of that. That's good. Oh, um, they also remarked that um, one could probably improve the, I guess, the gamma, the gamma, like the term of the n, n to the one fourth, but um, they don't really see how it, one can like just get rid of rid of it completely or you know improve it. Um, uh, like um, they can, they only saw that it can be improved slightly, not not a lot. So you you you'd still get like points oh oh something instead of 0.02 they said you might get 0.03 if you just improve the computations a bit but yeah that that's pretty much um yeah very much any other questions comments congratulations to our speaker for doing a fine job on a hard problem uh, Now he has to go back to study for finals. So, uh, uh, thanks for the talk, Tudor. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, thank you. Can I make a comment? Yeah, of course. The fourth root of 554 is about 4.8. So that improvement on the fourth root of n by the known examples is very tiny on the numerical evidence you managed to improve so you you don't really have numerical evidence that doesn't tell you that it isn't growing like it's square root of n plus a constant times the fourth root of n yeah do you did you get any sense tutor out of the proof like uh it's phrased in a for, for sufficiently large n. Uh, do you know what sufficiently large actually means in terms of their proof? Or not really. Um, no, I, I couldn't really get a sense of that. But um, I think the sufficiently large refers to the various inequalities that were used, which aren't very uh, challenging, and and you know you could probably figure out a constant that's not too big. If you go through each step, so, so sometimes you have something with O of N, you say a lower bound is this, all, all you're doing is saying that's true except for very small N. So I don't think you're, the constant's gonna be very big. I, I didn't check it as he was doing it, but. Thanks again. Bye everybody. <laughs>
Yeah, too dark. Um, yeah, we can talk in a few minutes. Yeah, great. Thank you. Ah, okay. What's up? Hi, Jeff. Can you turn the recording off? Oh, thank you. Uh, can I turn it off? I probably can. <laughs>